Okay, so let's kind of go over the products and sort of how this is going to evolve and work. So, the item is still being worked on. The idea is what I have to do is get a metal rod in here and a metal rod in here. And uh, I'm going to use Magic Skull first because I put some notches here and I want the Magic Skull to hold her very well. So we're going to get her to the point where she's on the back of the base and she's set up. And basically what will happen is... Uh, I'll be able to kind of work on her and get this situated and sort of build out the base as I'm going But at the very end of the project, it's going to have to be painted and built at the same time So like what I did with my uh, Savage Land Storm book custom I did at the very end after I pretty much got everything ready to where it went I used grass and what I did is I mixed in uh, brown paint with my Aves uh, sculpt and I sort of got all the grass situated in there and I kind of painted up the base and then what happened is you put in the item, you know, with her, we're going to put her in the item and then we'll build a wall around here and then we'll pour in the crystal clear 202 and then she'll be bonded into the base but it'll look like she's walking down water and it's all work because you can't pour in a crystal clear and then paint the bottom of the base, of course, you got to paint everything first. So that's kind of the, a process of this, how this is going to work. But as I'm building her and I'm customizing her, I'll be kind of like planning this as we go so you guys can see the whole process. Now, I have to talk to the client first. I don't know if we're going to just keep it with the short grass that I have here or we'll get some longer grass to make it look like she's walking through longer grass. And then that's kind of where we have to go from there. There's also, if you go to Michael's and AC Moore, they have other types of plants and stuff. So maybe I could find some really cool jungle looking plants and maybe add them or something. But I have to keep it simple. We're only kind of working with this type of a base, this size. We're not going any bigger uh, and elaborate because we need to save on room. Now, uh, so a lot of the products of Smooth On we'll be using is we got the Crystal Clear 202. We got this other stuff I'm going to explain in a second. I mixed up some uh, Smooth On uh, resin, which is the 300 I think it was. Uh, I put it in this tin and made a basic base. Now, the way this project's going to evolve a little different is, is like I said, uh, hopefully we got this down to a science now and I got everything, all the kinks worked out. Uh, I, I buy a lot of stuff from Smooth On, resins, molds, other projects, you know, crystal clear, stuff like that. So I'm in their system, and they have an actual uh, representative that travels throughout the, like, New Jersey, PA and stuff. And they gave me a call one day, and they said, hey, I'm driving through your area. We got some new products. Can I come by and show them to you? Which is actually kind of cool. It's kind of like that old school where, you know, you know, people would come to your door and sell you vacuum cleaners and stuff. But this is kind of cool because I can actually talk to someone and show them what I'm doing in real time. So, uh, if you call Smooth On, they actually have Reynolds Advanced Materials. These are the guys that actually are like the resellers. So, if you want to order any products, go to ReynoldsAM.com. Uh, That's kind of like where I order all my stuff. If they're basically Smooth On, but I guess they're their um, off company or something. I'm not, or distribution company, I guess. I'm not really sure. So, they stopped by one day. They showed, you know, they came down. They showed me all this new stuff. They even showed me this. Actually, I'm going to be doing one of these down the line where I'm actually going to try to make my own waterfall table for my kitchen. But that's another project down the line. But, you know, they, it was funny. I've been wanting to build one of these. They come in and they say, oh, yeah, we make this stuff too. And I'm like, that's exactly what I've been wanting to do. So, that's another thing. So, it's kind of cool that you see they have these products. So... When they came in, I told them what was going on. I said I did a Savage Land Storm statue and I put the base in clear resin, but the clear resin destroyed the paint sort of and it gave a lot of reaction, blah, blah, blah. So the guy says, okay, I know exactly what your problem is. What you need to do is you need to give a coating. Now, um, Smooth On sort of gave me that stuff with the Epoxy Cast 690, but the stuff with the 690 is such a slow casting epoxy, it actually bled a lot of the paints. So I told him what happened. He says, okay, try this stuff. So they actually gave me a sample. It's XT3D, XTC3D. It's for brushing on uh, epoxy on uh, 3D prints. So he says, what you need to do is paint up your item and then brush, you know, this stuff onto her feet, which would basically I'll brush this stuff on her feet, let it dry. And then what I do is I put her into the base, pour in the crystal clear resin, and that should not react to anything of that epoxy. That's what they said. But... In this video, we're going to do a test just to make sure. I got a couple, you know, parts laying around. I'm going to paint it up in some, like, green skin paint or whatever. Let that stuff cure. We'll put this uh, XTC stuff on it. Let that cure. And then what we'll do is we'll throw it in uh, some kind of container with the last of this Crystal Clear 202 because this stuff, I have just a tiny bit left. And that stuff really doesn't last after you open it up. 
and we'll do a test we'll see if that works if that works then this whole entire project would be great and then at the very end after we get her on the base we do all the grass everything's painted up we pour in a crystal clear resin we'll use the ak interactive stuff water gel transparency stuff to see if i can kind of just break up the water up top not really make it any wavy but just enough so it looks like it's not purely glass looking down so that's kind of the whole project a little bit long-winded but it should be a really cool project once it's all done uh, so my next step is when we come back, hopefully I'll have the statue with the rods in her feet and we can start planning out the getting her supported on the back of the base and then we can kind of work out all the rest of the details as it progresses. Alright, so I want to start planning out the base a little bit more, really get an idea of how I'm going to start building this and get her situated because... If I uh, don't really think about it now, I'll run into issues down the line. So one of the things is her head is turning over her shoulder, as you can see. So, you know, I don't know if you want to, like, you know, if you're going to have her displayed this way, if you're going to have her displayed this way, or if you want to look at it this way. So the idea is, whichever way I put her into the base, I want to make sure we get that clear resin pool and it's not hidden by high grass. Because if I have her walking into a little pond this way, and I put grass over here and here, uh, and you turn it, you really won't see any of that clear resin. So, what I'm thinking of doing is uh, I'm going to do it so this way we can see clear resin all around her. So, let me get the marker out. It's got to just plan it out now. So, if she's walking in, so what I'm thinking is we're going to have sort of like the dirt kind of like this way. You know, kind of like this is kind of like the dirt where she's walking in. And then uh, hopefully we can kind of do the clear resin sort of like around this way something like this so this way it doesn't have to be perfect it'll be all kind of like different angles so this will be all clear resin and this will be all the grass so this way if you turn her a little bit like at this angle you can see she's like walking into the water this way uh, and then this is all the grass over here because I highly doubt we're gonna have her position this way on your shelf really because it's kind of defeats the purpose so that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing. So that's kind of like my plan. So this way she's going in this direction. We can build the wall over here, pour in all the clear resin. It kind of covers the feet and go from there. Uh, so what I might need to do though is I think I just need to cut this down a little bit more. It's a little too high. I just want her foot to be a little bit down there a little bit more. Just a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Now, I had this stuff called Freeform Sculpt from Smooth On. They gave me this stuff about, I think, a year and a half to two years ago. It's still not bad. It's still uh, usable, but it's old and it's really tough to mix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of like use the rest of this now. I've just been using it as filler stuff. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to put it on the base here and I'm going to let it cure up for the night and day. So this way I could just have some kind of a starting point here. You know, even if I fill it up around here, I'm just going to mix up whatever left in here, get it done, just slap it on here for now. So this way I could Dremel in here, I could put this rod and I can get her situated on here and then I could start sculpting as I go around stuff, you know. It's kind of just, I, I need to get a base because right now if I try to glue this rod in this little thin base, it's not going to work, it's going to wobble. I need something to really start situating it and getting it there. So this one right here, this is my starting point, this little circle. Uh, so I'll get this mixed up, we'll slap it on there, let that cure up, and then tomorrow we could try to get that uh, hollow rod in there, and then we can start really figuring out and getting elements for it. So it's the next day, and I want to get this uh, rod set up here, so this way if I ever have extra A's or magic scope when I'm working on stuff, I can actually get the feet set up with the statue. Uh, so. I do have a second hole in her other foot here, so this way when she's on here like so, I can actually set up a rod system into another rock, so I figure I'm going to have her walking like sort of in rocks or something, I don't know yet. Uh, so this way this foot is uh, connected to here, so this is really durable. I don't want just uh, this foot having a rod with the oh you know the water around it I really want to make sure everything's working right uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to line her up correctly with the way I want her so I gotta kinda make it so this is all kind of the water so I have two part epoxy here from uh, BSI stuff I think it's BSI yeah BSI stuff so I want to mix A and B together in equal amounts I'll pour it in here we'll get this rod set up in here so this hollow part will be set there and then this way I can start working on, you know, getting the feet situated and all that. 
So uh, I think what's going to happen is I'm going to get this base pretty set up fairly fast, you know, with the feet. Um, get everything lined up. Because I want to make sure she's not turning this way. I got to make sure she's this way. I got to have the head on the statue, making sure she's lined up where I want it to go. So I think that's kind of where she's going to be. Got to make sure she's going straight. I got to, you know, if you look at it at this angle and you put it in, but then when you turn around here, you realize she's leaning. So you got to make sure it's kind of lined up where I have to go. So just a matter of uh, just mixing up some of this epoxy, getting that situated, and then we can kind of figure out the rocks or maybe sand or however she's walking in, we'll figure out what kind of material it should be. So at this point, I'm kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Uh, this whole entire statue is a little bit tricky because of her position and what we're going for. So at first, I thought about putting like a boulder here, a boulder here, and like another boulder and make it look like she's walking on boulders going in. Uh, but the problem is, is her feet don't really work that well with the position going in the water. The other idea is I thought about maybe making it look like the boulders were cracking under her feet, but it doesn't work with making sure she would be secured. So, and plus, you know, it's kind of like a more of an easier pose walking in the water. It doesn't look like she's stomping down. So that idea is out the water. Because then, you know, if she is cracking the water and it's breaking, therefore the water would splash up too. And I can't do that with the clear resin pouring unless I sculpted it, make it mold. So it's just not going to work. Uh, so I do have here aquarium uh, rocks. So the idea is going to mix freeform air. And I'm going to put the freeform air down. And then I'm going to throw a lot of these rocks on the freeform air just to get some kind of like position like how I want these rocks to go. Because uh, the idea is this is all going to be grass back here. We're going to have a little bit of grass around here and a little bit of grass right around here. But the idea is this is kind of like where, you know, she's the pool, you know, of like whatever, like little moat or wherever she's walking in, uh, rocks. And then, then down here, I'll probably mix some sand or something do down here. And then the wall will be built around here, and we'll have about an inch and a half of uh, clear resin. Because I want the clear resin to come up to about this ankle. Uh, so this way, the clear resin comes over here, and it locks both of these feet in. Now, I would love to have this foot, like uh, I did drill a hole in there, and I would like to have this foot kind of locked in with some kind of rod too. Um, we'll see if I can make this work. I might have to do a little bit of like... Uh, Basically, uh, you know, when I do the grass here, I might have to put some of the mud around here and just kind of, you know, whatever. So the idea is, my envision is, this is like a big pool coming in this direction, and then it comes out over here. So we're only seeing a little bit of the corner of it, of her walking in the water. So that's why we're not trying to close it in with grass here. We want to make it look like, you know, it's a big open piece, but we're only seeing this little section. That's kind of the idea. You'll see how things go. So for now, I'm going to mix up the freeform air. We're going to take some of these aquarium rocks. We're going to get all this sculpted on, uh, at least get it going, and that'll help me really start planning a lot more of it out down the line. So right now, everything is at a good starting point. I know this is not perfect. It's not exactly, you know, there yet. It's just a good starting point. Uh, I want to make sure that she pops in and out of this base with no issues because I have to paint her up. And then what's going to happen is when I'm ready to pour in the clear resin, this should be all done and ready to go. What's going to happen is this is going to take a good, uh, you know, be important part of this whole process. As long as this works, we still have to test this stuff first with the extra clear resin I have. 
But the idea is, once I get all my dirt up over sculpted here with the high grass, because it's going to come up to about this high, you know, some dirt will be back around here with some grass, so this way I can lock this foot into there and kind of build it on. So what's going to happen is I have all these loose rocks, and what I'll do is I'll throw a bunch of loose rocks in areas, but I'll be using this, uh, you know, this uh, epoxy stuff. And I'll throw some of this epoxy stuff in there to kind of clear coat it, the legs, and then uh, some in there. And I could throw some of these rocks in there to kind of help lock it in place. And what I did is I pushed up these rocks around here, this edge, because when I build my wall around here, uh, you know, the wall's going to go up to here. It's going to go about like this high or so. Uh, I'll throw a bunch of rocks in here when I pour my clear resin, so this way this kind of like fills in a little bit more over on that edge. Uh, so this will kind of work a little bit better. I, I got the idea down, it's going to be a little tricky, but you'll see how things go. But for right now, I'm at a good starting point. Uh, it's giving, helping me visualize things a little bit better, and it should definitely work like it's kind of going into a area with it's rocky. We got mud and grass growing around the edge, and then this is all clear resin around here. Uh, what I'll probably have to do, like I said, is mix up a little bit of the batch of clear resin first with some of the Jersey sand, throw in a nice little layer of the Jersey sand here first, just to make it look like it's sandy down at the bottom. And then after that, uh, we pour in a major to clear resin up to about this ankle, which will lock this foot over here, and it'll go around all those other rocks. So it should work out pretty well. Um, one of the things, too, I kind of thought about, if I could find it, I did look when I did my other things, if I could find fish to put fish into the clear resin, but the problem is, is a lot of, like, the fishing lures and fish things that I found out there, they were all rubber or they were stuff that would probably just melt with the clear resin. You have to find something like, like either resin or clear plastic, but that's just kind of a wishful thinking. Unless I find some other stuff I could throw in there, but for right now, I think we're looking pretty good. So, I am ready to start planning out this base. Now, uh, I'm sort of in a place of limbo right now where I don't have any Aves epoxy sculpt. I'm waiting for Aves to do the shipment to me. They're still kind of on delay with the whole COVID, I guess, and stuff. So, we'll worry about that when I get to it. But right now, I do have other materials. I do have Magic Sculpt, and I do have Freeform Air. So, right now, I'm going to start planning out the bottom of this base with Freeform Air. Get a base layer going and get this edging back here sort of uniformed uh, with the base. And then uh, what I could do is when I get the I use epoxy sculpt in the mail, I can actually mix it up with the brown paint and I can start using all the high grass and low grass in there and create the grass around the back of this area. Uh, but that'll be uh, later in the video, but for right now we need to get this other area set up. Now, I could put her in the base here and sort of uh, create off of this, which is a possibility. But the only problem is it's, it's not high enough to go over her feet and stuff. I want it to go a little bit higher. And it sort of kind of comes outwards too. Uh, the only problem too is this stuff shrinks too uh, over time. So what happens is the clear resin will probably seep around the bottom. And then I got to do all that sanding and buffing. I want the clear resin to come up fairly higher if I can as much as possible. So putting her back in the base for this project is not going to work. So we got to build a wall. So the way to build the wall is pretty simple. Go over to Home Depot, you can get this rolled of sheet metal. Uh, it is usually in the area of like roofing. I think it's like five inches wide. So what I did is I cut it, you know, just to cut it down to make life easier. I put tape around it so I don't slice myself. And what's gonna happen is I'm going to take this and I'm gonna spray it down with some mold release just to make my life a little bit easier. The, the freeform air really won't stick to this, but I wanna make sure it's sort of at least has a little bit more of an oilish, waxy kind of coating just to be on the safe side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece around here. We'll figure this out as best as possible. Uh, you know, I'll use some duct tape. I'll probably maybe use hot glue on the bottom. I don't, I'm not worried if the base is sort of like uneven after I put stuff at the bottom of it because we're not pouring in resin yet where I need to be level. Right now we're just going to be shoving, uh, you know, freeform air around the edges to get a nice good wall and lift it up. We're going to come up to about here you know, over this area with the freeform air. Maybe what I'll do is I'll mix in some black or brown paint into it just to get a little bit of like that muddy look to it. And then uh, we're gonna keep the wall on this for a while then. Uh, this way we'll keep it like this. We'll make sure it's nice and uh, decent and stuff like that. And then once that's all done and I get the A's in, what we'll do is we'll put the A's on top of that afterwards and I'll stick in all the grassing and we'll get the grass all situated. And then when I rip off the wall, We'll have a nice area going around the edge. And then once the figure is all painted up and ready to go, we put her back into the base and then we build another wall on this way. 
And then what we do is we uh, make sure that's nice and even. What I'll have to do is I'll probably have to use hot glue at the bottom so no clear resin kind of seeps underneath. And then uh, what I could probably do is we'll get popper out of the base. Uh, I could get a small block of wood and I could put the block of wood like right here because if this is all gunked up and it's uneven, I could put a block of wood here and I can have her nice and level. And then what we do is we pour in the clear resin with her locked into the base, such as show, like right there, like that. And then what happens is we'll have a nice level thing. It'll lock the feet into place. We use some of that uh, epoxy stuff that um, Smooth On gave me, and hopefully that'll kind of work out. We'll also do a test of that too. I'll try to get that situated as well. And that's pretty much the idea of how I'm gonna do this. So, like I said, it's building as we go. So she's pretty much ready to go to be painted almost. A few things I need to clean up. Uh, and then I sort of got to get the space rolling. And then once I get in the rest of the materials, hopefully everything will be uh, smoothed out and ready to go. So we are all set up right now to put the uh, freeform air in the back of this wall to get that basic wall set up. It's kind of a cheaper alternative than buying like a couple of kits of Aves and filling it in there and then using all that material. There's lots of other products out there you can use, but I like the freeform air because for $90 you get like a, a gallon kit of A and B and you have a lot of fillers. I find that freeform air is great for like bases and scenery. If you want to create rocks, uh, if you want to create like, you know, a scene of grass and dirt and stuff like that, I find that this stuff works out really well. Uh, but it's not really good for like sculpting onto a statue because it's very like uh, airy and marshmallowy. So you get a very roughness. It's good for like maybe like Halloween type stuff. Uh, if you want to create like a wall of like, you know, rocks. It's It's got its purposes, but what I use it for right now is just going to be the filler on the back of this wall. So, I have water, I have baby powder, I got some wooden tools, I got a paintbrush, I got my latex gloves, and I'm pretty much ready to set up. So what I'll do is I'll mix A and B together in equal amounts, I'll use some water, and what happens is this stuff gets very, very tacky if you use a lot of water, and it gets very sticky. So what I'll probably do is try to shove it in this areas in here, use my paintbrush and the wood tools, and then when I feel like I got a nice filler in there and it's kind of like really pushed in there pretty well, what I'll do is I'll kind of score it a bit because I'll probably put baby powder on it and score it. And what happens is the baby powder will help me use my fingers too and not stick to my fingers but push it into the area. Um, and then at the very end, uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of score it a bit even if there's baby powder on there because if you score it, if you ever done like pottery or like, you know, clay work as a kid or even just taking classes. Whenever you put clay and clay together, you usually score it and you smush it together because that helps bond it, you know, because you can't get in there and kind of like bond it all. It's just one of those old things. So it's the same thing. So if this dries and there's baby powder on there, it, it'll be hard for something to stick to it. So if it's scored and there is baby powder, when I go use the A's and I use the A's safety solvent, I can actually wipe away some of that baby powder and the A's will stick to it with no issue. So that's something I'm thinking about. But it's fairly straightforward. So let me go get the gloves, let me get some paint, I'll mix it up and then we're just gonna shove it in there and hopefully this will stay good for about a week. Hopefully this won't, you know, I can put it aside, let it just sit, get my A's and then start putting all those leaves on. Then once that's done, like I said, we pull this wall off, we put her when she's finished painted and then we build the wall on the other side and then we pour in our clear resin to go up to her ankles and stuff and let that cure and then pretty much we're ready to go. So I am ready to start working on the grass. So I have my Aves, it is red Aves epoxy sculpt. I'll mix A and B together with some brown paint. I'll give it like a nice good muddy color for up top. I'm only worried about the color up top with the grass because it would be a nightmare to try to sit in there and paint it. So if you make this look like mud, 
you pretty much get through that whole, uh, oh, I'll have to get in there with paint and washes and everything. It'll make, it'll work. Not worried about the wall in the back, because once I take off this metal sheet, I'm going to have to probably touch up some stuff, sand it down, and then blend it with some, like, paint and blends and whatever. So that's not a big deal. So what I did was I took out all these pieces. Uh, so you can see they kind of, like, they're together. They, you know, they go in, like, uh, where is it? As you see how they're in the piece, they're situated like so. Like that. So what happens if you cut off that, uh, the top part, you just slide these right off and therefore it's easier to lock these in place into the mud. So when you put these in there, it'll lock in place and it's harder to pull them out. Now you can put them in as singles, but when you do that, you have to sort of take your item. Like if you put this in there with just that, it'll hold it. But down the line, if you're not careful and you kind of pull it, what happens is it might slide out of the A's because this stuff is sort of like plasticky and smooth. You will never get it back in. So what you want to do is you want to sort of like bend the piece like so. You know, just give it like a little bit of an L. And this way when you push it in there and the A's, it'll lock it in place. So I do have some singles cut up. I do have the smaller grass here already too as well. It's kind of the same thing. So what I'll probably have to be doing is kind of like cutting and going, cutting and going and stuff like that. Um, the idea is I'm going to put the red eaves uh, around here. Uh, I want the higher grass over in this section right here and then a lot of the smaller grass over here. I don't want the high grass over here because this is kind of where she is in the focus. Over here it's kind of like behind her. So that's how it's going to work. So I just got to get this mixed up. It's going to be very tedious. Uh, you know, just kick on some music and stuff and then just put in the grass. Um, and then uh, hopefully it should work out pretty well. Okay, so uh, while I was working on all this uh, grass and everything, I was thinking about how is she going to get locked into place, how is it going to work out, uh, am I going to run into any issues and stuff like that. So I decided after I finished up and I turned off the camera, I went in the garage and I dremeled out a little bit longer of a rod up in this ankle here. And then what I did is the same exact steel that I put up in this one, I put here but I bent it downwards and I put Magisculpt around it. Now it looks funky back here but it doesn't matter that's going to get hidden so I drummled out a hole in here because uh, I figured let me get these rocks out of the way because you know I try to drummel in there with rocks and all of a sudden they spin or they spark or who the heck knows what they will do uh, it's better to get it out now while the resin was soft so what will happen is, is when she's painted up and we're ready to pour in the clear resin what I will do is I will put her in I will put magic scope down there I will put her into this base like so. I won't need to do any glue or anything with this foot because that rod is pretty sturdy. And then what I'll do is I'll put some of the brown red magic uh, eaves over here, get all that locked into place and let it sit up for the night. And then the next day we pour, you know, we pour in our clear resin because we'll have the wall and everything. But so now that I have all this pretty much situated and I got the idea running pretty well. What's going to happen is, is I'm going to situate her on a uh, wooden uh, set, uh, stand just so I can paint her. I'm going to go in the garage though. I'm going to find something like one of my broken arms or hands or something. And I'm going to paint her up and I'm going to paint that item up at the same time. Then when that item is all done, I have an old trial kit of clear resin which is pretty old. But it's uh, only got a little bit of resin left. Like not really even much. Like a little bit like that. So what we'll do is we'll taste, we'll test this, uh, you know, epoxy stuff on that piece, and then we'll pour that clear resin into it and see if there's any reactions, see how it works out. And if it works out, then what will happen is, when I'm ready to paint her up, I'm, what's going to happen is I'll put a bunch of rocks down here. I'll use some of this, you know, brush on stuff. We'll brush on some areas around here. We'll throw in some extra rocks. We'll brush on her legs too and everything, just to make sure none of that clear resin reacts to it. And then what we do is we pour in our clear resin, let it cure up, and then from there we go and we do all the water gel effects and stuff like that, and she should be finished up. So that's kind of the whole plan, but the next step is I'm going to let this cure up for the night, and then what we'll do is in my ne next chance I get, I'll pull off this wall, we'll clean up the edges around here, we'll make sure everything's smooth, fill up any holes, sand, paint, do whatever we need to do, and then we'll... I'll focus on her off camera, we'll get her going, and then we come back when we're ready to do the pours and do all this other brushwork and testing.
Okay, so I pulled off the wall, and I'm kind of going over everything. I like the where we're at right now, so we're looking pretty decent. So we got some air pockets, which I figured was going to happen. This uh, trying to smush uh, freeform in air into these areas is a little bit difficult. Over here, uh, I kind of was messing with this. I think I put too much baby powder mixed in with this one area over here, so this stuff is kind of like soft up pretty well. I think I've done that in the past too. You can't put too much baby powder in an area, so I think that kind of got messed up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the garage, I'm going to use my Dremel tool and Dremel out some of these areas. Uh, so this way it'll be easier to throw like uh, A's in these areas to fill it in. So what I'll do is I'll get some of these air pockets that I have that you can kind of see just dremeled out. Anytime I have extra A's now between now while I'm working on the other thing I can kind of fill in this area. And then one day I could go in the garage and sand all this down nice and smooth and then paint it like brownish to go to a black fade. And I think that'll work out for the edge. Um, now I'm also thinking about how this is going to work down here. Now that I got this part out, how this is going to work. When I build my wall, I think what I'll do is when I mix up my clear resin and I have her in there, we're ready to go. I probably will put some clear resin down at the bottom uh, with a little bit of my jersey sand. I'll mix that together because that jersey sand really goes down to the bottom. It doesn't really rise in the clear resin, which is good. And then this will give me a nice kind of a base down here with some like sand. I could probably throw a couple rocks or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Unless I feel that I need to create some kind of a sand at the bottom, I might have to use that epoxy stuff with a brush, put some sand down, and then pour the clear resin over. We'll see how things work out. Still got to do some testing before we do all that. But other than that, I really like where we're at. Uh, I'm just making sure too. Like some rocks are still loose here and there, which is not the end of the world. Uh, they got to come out anyway because they might float up. But I think I said that clear resin, uh, that epoxy stuff might seal this stuff down anyway. So there's a lot more to go. But for right now, let's get these edges and backside situated. And then we can worry about the front of it and the pour. Okay, so I am ready to start fine-tuning this figure and actually start painting this figure up. So before I start doing that, I really want to get everything prepped up for the base and also my trial uh, setup. So as you can see around the edges here, I've been using Red Aves, getting all this stuff cleaned up uh, from extra uh, projects. So tomorrow, hopefully, I can actually sit down and sand that down and clean up the back of this wall and everything. So I am getting this little tin here set up. So what's going to happen is I'm going to spray this down with mold release. But before I do that, I'm going to build a little wall like right here. I don't really need to use this whole entire tin. Just something small down here, nothing big. And what's going to happen is... Uh, I have this resin piece here, which is an old Harley Quinn premium format neck piece. I'm going to be spraying, when I spray her figure down with green skin and everything, I'm going to spray this down as well. So what will happen is, I'll have a little wall down here. We're going to throw a bunch of rocks in there. And we're going to use this as a coating. And we're going to get like a little bit of a base of this stuff with all the uh, rocks at the bottom. We'll let that cure up. And then when I paint up the figure, and I paint this up, what will happen is I'm going to coat this piece in this stuff as well and let that dry. Then once all that's dry, my old uh, trial kit of crystal clear resin, what we'll do is we'll mix up a batch and we'll put it in the tin here and we'll see if there's any kind of reaction. So the idea is this is going to be candy coated with this stuff and this is going to be candy coated and we put in a clear resin and hopefully that doesn't have any kind of reaction, it doesn't heat it up, it doesn't like bubble, it doesn't crack. We don't really know what's going to happen yet. I have to test it. If it works out really well, and that's what we're trying to do, what will happen is, when I build my wall here, I'll put a bunch of rocks at the bottom with some sand. I'll use this stuff here as well, and we'll do some coating. We'll get some rocks in there. We'll coat around the peaks. We'll figure, you know, even if the coating is a little bit up here and it makes the character look a little wet, that's fine because she's like walking in the water. But I'm not really sure how high to go. That's kind of the problem. I got to see how big this wall is and how much resin is going to go up to there. Um, so I might have to kind of coat this figure af uh, before I actually put her in there. So if I do any kind of coating, it's going to be around this area before I do there. Uh, and if that works out pretty well and everything's said and done, we mix up the clear resin and we pour it in and we let her cure up, do our final rippling at the end, and then clean up the sides and we're done. Now, there is only one issue with the clear resin. It is the middle of the winter. I will have to do the vacuum chamber to get all the uh, bubbles and the degas, the clear resin before I mix it together. So instead of doing the vacuum chamber in the studio because you're still screwing, you know, you're taking the fumes out into the studio anyway, I have to heat up the garage, do it in there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my pour in here. Uh, so as long as I have nice, good, clean, new filters in here 
and I have the garage door open and we get all these fumes out to the garage and it goes outside, everything should work out pretty well. So let me get all this set up, plan all this out. I got to fi finish working on the figure, fine tune her up, uh, get the base done, and then hopefully we can get ready to build the wall and finalize this. So I am ready to start working on the clear uh, stuff. Now, uh, you can see it's pretty much three days and this stuff cured up great. It's got a nice good candy shell on it. If you put too much on it though, it will drip down. So that's kind of something I have to kind of think about when I work with it. But after two days it was tacky, but now by the third day it's really not tacky anymore. Uh, maybe because I just didn't mix up enough. I only mixed a tiny bit. Maybe the uh, uh, ratio was kind of off. But right now it seems to be perfect. Uh, so that's kind of what I was looking for. So I'm going to leave it in here. You can kind of see the inside. We got some of that, you know, uh, epoxy down there at the bottom as well. So next step is we got our crystal clear. Now, like I said, this is old crystal clear, but there's enough in there to sort of... Uh, get uh, at least a test in here of the old stuff. So I have my uh, containers here. I'm gonna go in the garage and measure it. I'm gonna bring a heater in the garage, the floor one I have here, and kind of heat this up. And then once I mix it together, I could put it in my uh, vacuum chamber, get all the gases out, come back in here and pour it, kick on the airbrush booth in here to get all these fumes out and uh, everything. I could go grab lunch, come back. By the time I come back, this should be pretty much cured up to the point where and maybe I don't need the, you know, uh, booth on to take out the fumes as much because it would kind of like gel up and go from there. Uh, I got my long sleeves on. I got my mask and everything because you want to breathe this stuff in. Uh, and then uh, that should be pretty much it. I probably will have to open up the garage door just a little bit before I leave just to get some of the fumes out. But at least kind of get this uh, mixed up. But other than that, there should be enough in there. I might have to kind of like turn this upside down to really get a lot out of there. Uh, you know, I got to also use the calculator on uh, smooth on site to make sure I measure correctly as well. So let me get all that set up and then hopefully we could do the pour. Okay, so uh, I went in the garage, I heated up the resin in each of its separate cups, and then what I did is I put the cups, mixed it together, but I heated them up though, so I got the resin pretty much warmed up in the garage pretty well. I put it in the gas chamber, I degassed it, I got all the like gas out of it, so I did my pour, it's looking really good, I'm not seeing any reaction, I'm not seeing bubbling, I'm not seeing any cracking, so that's a good sign so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this back in the airbrush booth, let the, you know, keep going, like get all the fumes out. Uh, I got the garage door open. Uh, pretty much what I'm going to set up is I'm going to go and grab some lunch. So by the time I come back, this should either be gelled up or actually fairly cured. Because uh, I think it's, what is it, like a, it's a 20 minute pot life, uh, half hour to 90 minutes cure time, something like that, I forget what it is. Um, but yeah, this should work out pretty well. So I think that I finally solved the issue with being able to use clear resin but not destroy my paint at the same time with giving it a good candy coat. So that's what's great so far. So we'll come back uh, probably in like an hour, see how things are looking, and then hopefully tomorrow we can actually demold this, pretty much pop it out, and see how things look. So it's the next day. Clear resin hardened up great. I'm not seeing any kind of uh, bleeding or anything, at least from this angle. Uh, so I'm going to try to pop this out of here now and see if this kind of, that's it, it worked out perfect. Okay. All right, so this looks great. I mean, you can see there's no bleeding. Got a nice kind of a, at least a decent see-through. Of course, you know, this was on the uh, this side, so you get a little bit of a texture. But anything smooth, you can see really nice no bubbling so it worked out great no problems ever I mean underneath here um, yeah so this is perfect this is actually gonna work exactly how I wanted it to be um, now like I say when I first did this test uh, with that Savage Land Storm I used a super slow uh, clear uh, you know the clear resin and what happened is that soaked into the paint and really destroyed it so uh, this uh, epoxy stuff that's over it will actually help it from not actually destroying it from what I can tell. And this is the faster, uh, you know, clear resin. So this is going to work out perfect. So my next step now that I know this works out is I'm going to grab the base. Uh, I'm going to build the wall. 
Um, and then what I'll do today is I'll mix up some more of that epoxy. We'll put the rocks down. We'll give a nice good clear coat and everything. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is sort of clear up the feet a little bit, but not to the point where I can't get her into the base or... Uh, no, you know what? I, I'm trying to think about this. and you know, I'm going to do the rocks first. I'm going to do a whole nice thing of rocks first. And then when I'm ready to start, like, figure I'm going to do the pour, I'll clear coat her feet, and then the next day I'll do it. Because when I do her feet in that base, it might lock into that key system. So i got to be very careful with that. So, yeah, I'm going to do the rocks today. I'm going to get the wall set up. I'm going to get the rocks in there. We're going to use some of this uh, epoxy, get the rocks all set up at the bottom, let that clear up. And then maybe later tonight I can actually get her into the base if I think things are going well. I'm just thinking out loud as I'm going because this is kind of like still new, but this should work out pretty well. So I'm going to start building this wall. So as I'm building this wall, what I decided is going to happen is when I use that uh, clear epoxy to do the rocks, I'm going to put some of that clear epoxy going down around this area here, around up around here, and a little bit over here. So hopefully what that'll do is seal these edges for me a lot because I'm going to do a lot of taping underneath here uh, to get this piece on. So I'm going to put tape around here, which I might kind of rip up this paint back here. But that could be fixed. This way, if this clear epoxy goes into here, these areas, and it sort of like helps seal up this wall, I won't have to really put any, uh, you know, um, hot glue at the bottom, which I still might have to. But if if I do it enough in there, as you can kind of see in here it'll seal up that area pretty well. And then this way when I pour in my clear resin, when I have She-Hulk at the bottom, I won't have to worry about any uh, like leaking and stuff. That's kind of like my main concern. Because if you get any kind of leaking, what'll happen is you might get air bubbles coming up and then it might cause a lot of issues around here and plus get over on my desk or wherever. You know, it just, it just makes more of a mess. So if I could seal this up as best as I can, then uh, everything will work better. Now, I'm going to try to come up as high as I can with the clear resin. Uh, that's why I built the wall up. But I can't go up too high back here because what will happen is I won't have this wall and it could actually seep through and bleed down there. So i got to be very careful with the pour. Uh, but it should work out. So, I am all set up to start doing the clear coat and getting rocks down here. So we built the wall. I put tape at the bottom, I put a little hot glue to make sure it stays, I put a lot of tape over here which I'll probably rip up that paint but it's not the end of the world. So the way this is going to work is I have some sand, I have my rocks over on the other table. I'm going to mix, I got A and B all measured out and mixed up, uh, going to get ready to get mixed up. And what's going to happen is I'm going to use the old paintbrush and I'm going to kind of brush all these rocks first. Now I'm not going to brush here and I'm not going to brush here because this is where her feet go. If I get any kind of like clear coat or anything mixed up in there, I probably won't get her back into the base and it'll be a nightmare. So I'm just going to stay around the area for now, give this all a nice clear coat, throw some rocks in there to lock in place, maybe throw a little sand around here, kind of get it all worked out. Now, one of the things about this is I can't get any of this clear coat uh, epoxy stuff on this back wall here. If I do, What'll happen is it'll cure up, and if I can't pull it off and I pour in my clear resin, you'll get some weird funky things there. So i got to be very careful. But the idea is I want to use this old paintbrush and sort of go in here at the very corner and kind of lock this in place. That's why I have this on a block of wood, and I have it on cardboard. So if there is any leaking going on, it's going to drip downwards onto the cardboard, and it's not going to go like underneath the base, and then i got to sand all that down. It's kind of tricky but it should work out. Now the only problem with the sand though is as you can kind of see a little bit of dust is getting on this wall. So what happened was this metal stuff you get from Home Depot for you know whatever you use it for uh, your your um, roofs or whatever it's very oily and greasy. So I used a microfiber tool and I really buffed the hell out of it and I got as much of that grease off as possible and then I hit it with mold release so this way it's got a nice good coat of mold release so this way when I pour in a clear resin nothing should stick. So that's where I'm at. Um, but like I said, you know, what I'm going to do is I'll mix this up. You'll see how I mix this up, but I'm going to move it over to my airbrush booth, which is leveled. And this way it's out of my way for today. And then the next step is once this is kind of like nice and curing up and things are looking good, I could put her into the base once she's finished up, ready to go, get her feet locked into place over here with some clear coat. 
let that cure up for a day or so, and then do my pour. I really don't want to rush this and do my pour today because it is just cold as hell today and I don't want to heat up the garage for, you know, like really good like two or three hours just so I could do this clear coat. I'm going to wait for like a day where I'm in the garage all day long and I can do work while doing this at the same time. So for right now, I just want to get this rocks and sand down there, kind of like get this set up and then we'll go from there. All right, so some tedious steps right now. One, I'm gonna mix up some Magic Sculpt. I'm gonna put it in there with some of the brown paint. We're gonna lock her into place. After lunch, uh, later on today, when this kind of cures up, maybe even later on by the night, uh, what I'll do is I'll mix up some XTC stuff. I'll pretty much lock her into place. I'll kind of coat up her feet, do whatever I need to do, call it a night. Tomorrow, uh, when it's pretty much near the end of the day and I don't have uh, much work to do, what I'll do is I'll heat up the garage, I'll heat up the studio, I'll mix my uh, 202 resin in the garage, and then what I'll do is I'll bring it into the studio, I'll put on the airbrush booth, and I'll do my pour. I'll let that sit for about a good hour, and then what I'll do is I'll close up shop for tonight. Once I uh, wake up the next day, what I'll do is I'll fumigate the studio in case there's any lingering fumes, get it nice and fresh air into the studio, warm everything up, and then I could pull the wall off, I could clean up, I can do all the other stuff. So it's a little bit tricky, it's kind of a pain, but this will give me a chance to get this done tonight, you know, set everything up. Tomorrow morning, wake up, go over to Home Depot, get some uh, containers to mix everything. I think I need to get one of those little, like, little blow torches because I think you use that to kind of, like, get any bubbles out. I forget how. I've seen some videos on how to do it, but I'm not sure if I'll go that route. We'll see. But that's pretty much where we're at. So let me get this mixed up and locked into place for now. Okay, so I pulled off the wall, and what I did is I used a really nice fresh blade of X-Acto blade, and I kind of went around the area like this, and I took off the flashing. Uh, I went really slow. Uh, if you go too jagged, you'll mess all this up, so I tried to do the best I could. There is a little bit of a bubbles that popped up around the edges, but not the end of the world. So then I went in my uh, in the garage, and I used a Dremel tool, and I kind of like buffed out the areas. I also buffed out this area here, cleaned this up as much as possible. The same thing with this one over here. Uh, the only problem is, is some of these rocks are starting to stick out and they're not going to sand down so that'll be kind of messy. And if I throw any kind of like uh, putty here or aves or something which I'm thinking about doing but it might not look right, uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but for right now what I am doing is um, I'm just sort of buffing this area out and buffing around here cleaning. So I have this uh, super fine sanding uh, package, you get these like off Amazon or eBay. Uh, so right now I'm using the 1200 uh, grit, and I'm just kind of going around here, just cleaning up this edge, getting this buffed up as best as possible, and just really kind of cleaning this up, because it was really bad. It was like, you know, really jagging, and if you put your finger, your hand here, finger, you sort of feel this really sharp area, but now it's kind of really taken out, and we're getting cleaned up. So uh, I'm going to keep going with this. Like I said, what I might do is I might get some Aves, and I might just throw a, like a layer of A's around here with some of the brown paint just sort of kind of get this area kind of like a little bit more even uh, just clean this up a little bit um, I mean I sort of kind of like it jagged though I kind of like it look messed up around here so it kind of like blends into the base a little bit more so I might actually just leave it because I might just cause more issues if I try to do it um, but like I said right now I'm just kind of making sure I get all this cleaned up 
I gotta wipe all this down up top and the next step is we're gonna do is we're gonna put water gel uh, transparent effects on top of this so what we'll do is we'll create a little ripple in this up here so it breaks it apart a little bit and then I'll, I'll try to create some better rippling around the feet like it's kind of pushing the water a bit but we'll get to that later for right now I'm just gonna keep cleaning this up buffing it and uh, sanding it and then we'll hit it with some paint so it's been about three days and I wanted to make sure everything was going well uh, the foot in there sort of had a little bit of reaction. I'm not really sure why. Uh, maybe it's just because uh, the crystal clear was just soaking on there too long before it cured. Or maybe because I put too much thickness on there. Or the XTC stuff reacted. I'm not really sure. But luckily it worked out fine for this item because it's not actually... Um, uh, it works well because it's dirty, I guess you can say. So it's, you can still see the foot's there. But it looks like maybe mud is coming off of her foot as she's stepping in there so it works but that's going to get hidden now because this is a super flat surface and it doesn't look right what we want to do is we want to create rippling effects so this is called AK interactive water gel transparency and if you look at this picture here you can sort of see rippling so this stuff kind of smells and looks like Elmer's glue so I'm just going to grab a spoon I'm going to slap it on here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my airbrush, I'm going to use my paintbrush and create rippling, a little bit of jaggedness, so it breaks up the top of this item. So this way, it doesn't look perfectly crystal clear, and it actually feels a little bit more like water motion and stuff. Now, the only bad thing about this stuff is you can't go super thick. If you go super thick, what happens is it doesn't cure correctly, and it stays cloudy. Now, I did do a test on another clear item a while back when I first got this stuff, and I did a little bit thin stuff, and I did really thick stuff, and I realized that the thicker stuff won't work. Now, you can use regular water to help thin this down. It doesn't really matter. But if you go too watery, it just pulls perfectly even, and it doesn't look right. You want to keep it consistent with this thickness as best as you can to create that, uh, you know, that ripple effect. You want to keep that going. So, like I said, you use an airbrush at a low PSI. You kind of go around, create some rippling, and then over here with the paintbrush, I'll just kind of go around the feet to kind of create that rippling like it's she's walking in, and then let it cure up, and hopefully in a day or so, it takes a little time for it to cure, we'll have a nice good, uh, you know, effect on top of here so it's not perfectly flat and clear like glass. Okay, it's the next day and everything's cured up. So we're pretty much done. This base came out amazing. I'm really happy with the way all this rippling works. So it looks like, you know, you got some kind of motion with her stepping in the water. Uh, sadly, there is that little bit of weird, uh, you know, mess up with the paint on there. I'm not really sure what happened. The only thing I can think of is because this clear resin was so thick, uh, maybe inside it just took a little bit more time to cure and it just kind of messed it up. So, I mean, that's the only downside about this, but it, it sort of works, though. It kind of looks like there's some mud and stuff going over her feet, so you can still see her feet. It's not that it's not there, 
um, but what it is, it just looks like a little bit of dirt going over it. So I think, you know, the mistake actually still helped with this item. I mean, uh, we really just wanted to have the green foot to show through, but I don't know. It's just one of those things. But all in all, it still came out great. The base works uh, beautifully. Uh, there's really no issues with it. So that's pretty much it for the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back with some more videos. And I will link the final video of her in the description so you can see what the whole entire item looks like uh, in a nice good 360 view.